Hi, everyone. Omar here. I want to quickly share a story from my recent interview with Dr. Alexander Leyendecker, the director of the Advanced Space Life Research Institute, ASRI. The Rodin Research 20 experiment flew female mice to the International Space Station to study how spaceflight affects fertility and the female reproductive system and what that means for future astronauts and their children. Right now, the RR20 offerings are housed at the University of Kansas Medical Center. The original funding to maintain the F2 and F3 colony is ending. KUMC has partnered with ASRI, which is now raising money via a KUMC endowment to keep the colony alive and complete further analysis. I've confirmed this directly with the RR20 principal investigator at KUMC. The stakes are high. These mice carry some of the only multi-generation mammalian data we have on how spaceflight and cosmic radiation could affect fertility, pregnancy, and long-term health. Not just for astronauts and future space settlers, but for medicine here on Earth. In a moment, you'll hear Alex explain in his own words why saving the space mice matters so much. If this resonates with you, I'd ask two things. First, support the campaign if you can. The link is in the description. Second, share this with one person or one community that cares about serious space research and biomedical science. Here's Alex. Rodin Research 20 started, uh, the planning for it started back in 2013. Uh, it was a collaboration between NASA Ames uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Lane Christensen, who is the lead principal investigator uh, for RR20. They put together a plan to send female mice into space so they could s study sort of the long-term effects of spaceflight on multiple systems, but particularly the reproductive systems. So it took almost 10 years of planning before they finally did get to launch. They launched in November of 2023. They sent 40 female mice and the mice flew for 42 days in space. They returned in December of 2023. The interesting thing was that when they brought the mice back down to Earth, mm -hmm. half of them were mated with male ground controls, and those mice did manage to uh, successfully reproduce. They created a new generation of mice, uh, which are called F1s. So the mice that flew in space were F0s, and their direct descendants, their children, were, were F1s. Those F1s were also mated and also had offspring. So we get into a second generation beyond those that flew in space and females are born with all their gametes. What was really, really interesting was that because the uh, oocytes that females carry are actually generated two generations prior by their grandmothers, basically the, the gametes of the grandmothers had been exposed in space flight. And when the F2s were born, it very quickly became evident that they, they carried a significantly altered phenotype. So I think there were there was higher propensity for obesity in, in some of the females. Uh, the males were also slightly physically larger. Okay. Um, the cognitive function was actually slower uh, in, in some of the mice. Uh, so there were impacts, measurable impacts that, that had happened. We now are seeing the compounded effect that has happened a couple generations later. That has massive implications, you know, when we're talking about genetics, when we're talking about the future of spaceflight. And when we do long duration missions and we, as mammals ourselves, with a very, very close DNA structure relation uh, shipped to these mice, when we ourselves have these exposures, we can expect that over the course of generations, we may also have phenotype alterations. But to finish out the story of what our 20 is and why we're involved. Uh, NASA gave them a call and said, hey, we've had Space Life Sciences budget cuts here at the agency. Um, they said, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to extend your grant. You know, we can no longer afford to, to support this project. We did agree that we are going to do everything in our power to help them raise the funds to sustain those mice for at least another three years so they can make the really, really exciting findings and, you know, see perhaps what the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, seventh and eighth generations are going to be able to showcase okay. because that will, that is going to give us a blueprint for how we do things with humanity mm -hmm. in the future. If we lose the experiment, which is what the risk is, then we have lost 10 years of time was invested in this $16 million of us taxpayer money, at least was invested into this. And we are only now starting to harvest the fruit from it. So the mice are at risk of euthanization. Mm -hmm. These mice really are going to be 
very, very crucial to the overall story of how humanity goes forward in the uh, in the coming decades. So um, save the space uh, if you were able to donate and certainly please help share and spread the word, even if you aren't able to donate. 